Okay, let's talk about algebra versus calculus. This is going to be a very general video, but if you were ever interested in calculus, and maybe you're an uh, algebra student right now, and you're thinking, man, am I going to take calculus? What, what's that going to be like? Or do I have to take calculus? Well, uh, you know, I'm going to try to um, give you a little bit of insight on the difference between these two uh, math uh, courses or math levels. But uh, here's the deal. Let's just kind of do some basic um, observation. So algebra, you know, pretty much everyone's going to have to take uh, some sort of algebra in their um, K through 12 education, right? So it's typically you start learning algebra concepts. You actually start learning algebra concepts way back in the first and second grade. You don't realize it, but if you were doing problems like a box plus two is equal to five, and you're like, oh, three goes into there, because uh, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Well, you're actually solving an equation. This is re really technically algebra. You may not think of it in, in that uh, respect, but in fact it is. So you've been kind of learning algebra concepts, uh, you know, more formally, you know, when you get into pre-algebra and then in high school level algebra. So pretty much everyone who's been through high school um, has taken at least some sort of algebra course. Now, not everyone has to take calculus. Okay, so who takes calculus? Well, if you're going to be going to, uh, for the most part, um, a college or university and doing anything technical, you know, maybe uh, uh, going for a computer science degree, engineering degree, maybe a math degree like I have, uh, you know, of course you're going to be taking calculus. Uh, now, you can actually take uh, calculus as a senior in high school um, by uh, taking like an AP um, calculus course that's advanced placement. So you could take, you know, there is a small percentage of students that do achieve uh, that level and they actually end up taking calculus in high school. But uh, this is just going to be a general video on uh, some of you out there. Maybe you took algebra, maybe it was like 40 years ago and you never took calculus. You're just kind of curious on what is the difference between uh, these uh, two mathematics. Well, I'm going to talk about this in a way that everyone uh, out there can understand. So we're going to keep it very, very non-technical, but you're going to have a definite appreciation of the difference between algebra and calculus after I finish this video. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video, but I have been teaching math for decades. And uh, over those years, I've learned one thing, and that is all students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, it requires a willingness of the student to do the work. Okay, so if you're not willing to do the work, no teacher is going to be able, uh, be able to help you out. But the second thing uh, you need um, as a student to be successful in math is great math instruction. Okay, you need a teacher that can teach you in a super clear and understandable way, in a way you like and understand, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level and struggling in math, or maybe you want to get ahead in, math, in mathematics, definitely check out my math help program. Now, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test with a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, maybe the ASVAB going into the military, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you prepare and pass those exams if you happen to be a homeschooler. My uh, middle and high school math courses were just voted number one by a major homeschool publication. Very excited about that, so definitely check that out. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so algebra versus calculus, and this is what a typical kind of algebra problem may look like. And this is kind of a typical calculus uh, problem. So you can see, you know, the notation, especially with calculus, gets very abstract. And for that reason, I think a lot of us, uh, you know, algebra students look at this, you know, they're intimidated by it. So you don't, you don't have to be intimidated by notation that you understand symbols and whatnot. Believe me when I tell you, uh, if you want to take calculus, uh, you can, okay? Even if you're not doing well in algebra, you can definitely get to a level uh, to be successful in calculus. But of course, again, it takes uh, hard work and uh, great instruction. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at a little bit of what um, algebra and calculus looks like. I already gave you one example, but uh, this is uh, some more examples. So here is like an, uh, an equation that you, you're going to see in algebra. I'm kind of keeping it more at like the algebra one level. So this is an equation that you, um, or type of equation you'll study. Then you have different formulas like this, y equals mx plus b. This is the equation of a line. And you study functions in algebra. 
and other type of uh, equations like this. So the square root of x plus 1 equals 5. All this right here, when you see this, you would classify this as algebra. Okay, So let's take a look at calculus. So here I have uh, something called an integral. Okay, This little crazy symbol like that. It's actually what we call an elongated s. And it uh, really kind of talks about the sum. And I'm not going to get into it now, but I have a few um, calculus videos on my YouTube channel. Matter of fact, they got quite a bit of views, mil millions of views. So a lot of people are interested in this. So check out some of those additional videos, uh, my calculus videos. I really get into, I break things down. Um, you know, uh, we could kind of, we really kind of get into the mechanics of calculus. But in here, you just kind of need to know that this little um, symbol it represents the concept of adding things up or the sum, and this is called an elongated S. So instead of an S like that, we kind of stretch it out. You know, but uh, we think of it as an integral symbol. But this right here, if you see this kind of mathematics, this is calculus. Then we have stuff like this, dy, dx, uh, things, uh, if you saw a little thing like that, this is an indication you're dealing with calculus. This is what we call the derivative. And this is uh, an, an integral, okay? And this really, these two parts right here make up the main parts of uh, basic uh, calculus, okay? Integration um, and um, differentiation, all right? So you just need to know, uh, I'm just giving you a little bit of a flavor of how um, each of these maths uh, look, okay? So you wouldn't look at this and be, oh, is that calculus? No, this is calculus. So let's go ahead and now uh, and get into a little bit more um, of the uh, kind of like specifics of what uh, each math does. Now, um, this is very, very general. So let's talk about algebra here. So in algebra, we solve equations, okay? You solve equations like these uh, equations right there, okay? These are equations as we have equal signs and inequalities, but we all, we have different um, uh, type of equations that we study in algebra. So a big part of learning algebra is solving for an unknown variable uh, that we can kind of represent in an equation. And again, there's different types of equations, linear equations, quadratic equations, radical equations, rational equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations, there's a ton of different type of equations um, that you have to learn how to solve in algebra. So a big part of algebra is solving for an unknown variable or variables or systems of equations at that. So again, huge part of algebra is solving all different sorts of equations. Now, another thing you learn in algebra is how to graph functions, okay? So how to take an equation of something. Here, let me give you an example. Let's say I have y equals 2x plus 1. This is what we call a linear equation. But in fact, we can represent this as a graph, okay? And graphs have tremendous value just by analyzing and interpreting things. So we want to know how to graph all sorts of functions. And again, that's something that you learn in algebra. Now, um, another thing we want to be able to do is to write functions. In okay, case so we're given information, we want to actually write the equation, let's say of a particular graph and whatnot. So here, uh, you learn how to graph functions, and then we learn how to also write uh, these particular functions. So if you don't really quite understand what I'm talking about, that's okay. Just again, I want to give you a general feel of some, some of the main um, uh, topics or concepts you learn in basic algebra. And then lastly, and I'm skipping a ton of stuff here, in algebra you do a lot of word problems. Okay, so we solve these basic real life word problems. Now I'm using the word basic because you'll see here in a second when I compare this to calculus it's much different so um, but you learn how to solve you know um, you know word problems that a lot of students go well why am I even doing this this word problem really doesn't have any uh, you know uh, value to me it's like that old word problem with the trains one train left at 5 p.m. the other train going this direction left at uh, 3 a.m. when is you know this train's going at this speed this train's going at this speed when are they going to meet you know what distance down the track I'm kind of just being real general here but a lot of people would be like why would I need to learn you know how to solve a problem like this it doesn't really have a lot of real life uh, application but I can tell you right now you know it does but again these are more basic type of uh, real world prompts. But uh, let's go ahead and now uh, take a look at calculus. So what are some of the main ideas in calculus? Well, the first 
big one is finding the area underneath a curve, okay? Again, I have additional videos on this, but let me just show you down here real quick. So if I wanted to find the area of a triangle, for example, that's super easy uh, because we have a lovely um, uh, formula for that, right? So every triangle is one half base times height, or we wanna find the area of a circle, that's gonna be what, uh, pi r squared. Hopefully all of you understand what I'm talking about, or the area of a rectangle, length times the width, no problem. But what if we had some crazy figure like this, and I said, find the area of this, uh, let's give it a name, a squiggly. Find the area of this squiggly. Um, a lot of people's expression would be like, uh, huh, uh, the area of squiggly? Well, give me the formula, and I'll tell you the area of squiggly. Well, there is no formula, okay? There is no formula for this. So in calculus, we use something called integration to find the area underneath uh, the curve, okay? So here, this little squiggly line would be the curve, and we're finding the area underneath it. I'm really kind of oversimplifying, so those of you out there that are calculus students or professors, you know, don't be too tough on me in the comment section. But one of the main, main ideas in calculus is finding the area underneath a curve because a lot of these crazy shapes in real life, we don't have a formula, you know, like a lovely little area formula. So calculus solves this problem. It's one of the main things that calculus does is it allows us to find the area of all sorts of anything, matter of fact, that we can describe with the function or the volume as well, okay? Now, another big part of calculus is solving what we call rate of change problems. This is uh, things that are constantly uh, changing, okay? So what would be constantly changing? Well, like acceleration. Let's talk about this real quick. So let's say here you are in your little vehicle. You're going at uh, zero miles per hour, and you are now uh, going to speed up to 60 miles per hour, okay? Well, let's say you can do this in 10 seconds, right? Uh, I don't know, I think that's pretty fast, or maybe that's pretty slow. Uh, some of you car buffs out there would know better than me, but I think that's kind of like maybe average, I don't know. Anyways, but we're, we're accelerating, so we're constantly over this 10 seconds, we're going faster, 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 faster. So if we wanted to know exactly how fast we were going, uh, at 4.28 seconds, okay, at 4.28 seconds, how fast is this car going, okay? Well, it's going from zero miles per hour uh, to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds. Well, what's going on with this vehicle, it's constantly changing. The rate of uh, its speed, its velocity is constantly changing. So if we wanted to find a one moment in time, that's not such an easy problem, and algebra cannot solve that type of problem, okay? We need calculus to solve what we call rate of change problems, and this involves um, uh, using the derivative or differentiation, okay? So here again, to the two big problems that calculus solves for us is one, finding the area underneath curves and volume, et cetera, those type of problems, and then rate of change problems. And then lastly, uh, in calculus, you can really solve complex real life uh, word problems, like engineering problems, things that are not so simple. You can uh, we can model exactly what's going on through rate of change, uh, you know. And this is why calculus is the mathematics of engineers. Okay, engineers need to um, use a lot of calculus uh, to solve real life word problems. So you know you got to appreciate our modern technology. You know whether that be a car, an airplane, a boat, a cell phone, you know, computer, the internet. Uh, you know, it's a, there's a huge application of calculus and other mathematics as well to solve real life word problems. So, you know, if you're in algebra and you're like, oh, you know, word problems, I hate those things. Why do I need to solve these? I'll never do these type of problems. Well, I can kind of understand that, but you're learning the basics of mathematics. You need to understand algebra. You need a strong algebra skill set in order to do calculus. But hopefully um, this little video, hopefully I did a decent job kind of giving you a sense okay of what algebra does and what calculus does but i can tell you right now if you have an opportunity to take calculus you definitely should it is an awesome subject and uh, you know of course um you know i love mathematics i have a degree in math um but you know i, I think uh whether you're going to become an engineer or a mathematician doesn't make a difference i think just knowing some calculus will give you a real a deeper appreciation 
of you know the modern uh, world okay that uses all this technology engineering and science so it's pretty fascinating and i can tell you right now no matter what level of math you are if you're taking basic math or maybe you failed math and you're just kind of just trying to relearn math i'm telling you right now you can get to this level but again, it takes commitment, it takes time, and it takes great instruction. So hopefully this video maybe even helps you out to look into to possibly taking calculus. And if that is the case, or if you just found this video generally interesting, well, then maybe consider uh, interesting me being, well, I'd be interested in, see, I fumbled them on my words there, you smashing the like button and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've uh, been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.